Let's begin our detailed examination of the Staffordshire Bull Terrier with the head. The head is the hallmark of the breed and is an important part of your evaluation. The head must always be in proportion to the dog's overall balance, regardless of the individual dog or bitch's prevalence of bully or terrier characteristics. The skull is short, broad, and deep throughout. This means that the skull should present nearly equal measurements of width, length, and depth. The cheek muscles are very pronounced. The muzzle is short. It should be half the length of the skull measured from stop to occiput. There is a distinct stop. The skull and muzzle should lie in parallel planes. From the front, note again the broad skull and pronounced cheek muscles. The overall impression should be a chiseled look produced by the strong shape of the muzzle, the prominent cheek muscles, the prominent temporal muscles, and the distinct stop. Note that the temporal muscles form a line of cleavage down the center of the top skull when viewed head on. The muzzle itself is broad with a strong underjaw, giving the muzzle a square shape. Note the clean lip line. This muzzle is too long in proportion to the skull. Remember, the muzzle should be about half the length of the skull. This muzzle is too heavy for the skull. There is not enough skull and the stop is not well defined. This skull is not deep through. It slopes down toward the front too much. This underjaw is weak. The muzzle should be more squared off. This head is correct with the proper muzzle to skull proportions. You can see the nearly equal measurements in width, length, and depth. This impression of equal horizontal and vertical measurements are also valid when seen from the front. This dog's nose is correct too. It is black and ample in size. A pink nose or Dudley nose is a serious fault. The Staffordshire Bull Terrier's bite should be a scissors bite like this, evenly placed in a well-developed strong underjaw. Lips are tight and clean. Because of the Stafford's bulldog ancestry, undershot bites are sometimes seen in the show ring. While a true scissors bite with large teeth is always preferred, you should remember that a dog with proper head structure but a slightly undershot bite is more representative than a badly proportioned head with a good bite. Badly undershot bites or overshot bites are serious faults. The Stafford's eyes are round and of medium size like these. They should be set to look straight ahead. The color should be dark. Darker shades are preferred, although the color may vary slightly with coat color. This means the shade may range from dark to very dark. These eyes are too light in color and are faulty. These eyes are too small, giving a squinty or varminty look. And these eyes are too large and prominent. While the standard calls for a round eye shape, these large eyes are not correct. This dog's pink eye rims are acceptable since the coat is white around the eyes. In all other cases, however, pink eye rims are faulty. These eyes are correct, round, but not large or protruding dark in color and set wide on the head. Stafford ears are an important component of type. This dog's ears are correct. This is clearly seen from the rear. They are rose ears and are small and thin. They are well placed on the skull. These are set too low. 
These half-pricked ears are also correct. From the side, you can see that the ears are set back on the skull. These drop ears are a serious fault. As are these fully pricked ears. Remember, the ears should be half pricked or rose. What about these ears? They're too large and set too high on the head. Here, the cartilage of the ear is too stiff, causing so-called flyaway ears. This is not desirable. These rose ears are correct, small, thin, and set well. The correct Staffordshire Bull Terrier's expression is a combination of attitude, eye shape and placement, and the make and shape of the head. That is the essence of the breed.